the reason the narcissist does so much stuff to you, the reason that they won't stop, the reason that they won't quit you even after they move out or move on is because the narcissist does not expect you to be strong. The narcissist in your life, your ex-narcissist, ex-wife, ex-husband or whatever, they expect weakness from you. They expect you to roll over and take it. They never ever expect when you will turn around and fight back, when you will fight fire with fire, when you just cut them off. When they reach out to check in on you on Easter, you say, you on Easter. When they reach out and say, oh, we just wanted to check in on how you're doing, say, you and block them. They do not expect you to be strong. They don't see strength in you anymore. They've a lot of times they've beaten you down so much to the point where you don't even see yourself as strong anymore. You're strong. You can do it. I promise. You don't have to be nice. It might not be in your nature to be mean, but sometimes you just got to say you to this person. They're not expecting strength. Be strong. What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of A Narcissist Explains. I am self-aware narcissist Lee Hammock. And in this series, I take my TikToks and YouTube shorts and make them longer for you. If this is your first time seeing my face, I'm a diagnosed narcissist that uses my platform to raise awareness for narcissistic personality disorder, get more people into therapy, and also, also validate the victims and survivors um, of said disorder. Okay, so this episode, I mean, the, the TikTok you just watched is why, you know, how a narcissist does not expect you to be strong. And that's 100,000% coming from the, the, the horse's mouth, the narcissist's mouth. A narcissist does not expect you to be strong. Because a lot of times you get into these situations where you're dealing with a narcissist for in, a, in long distance relationships, uh, not long distance, like long term relationships. Um, it doesn't even have to be an intimate relationship. When I say long term relationships, I could mean your brother, your sisters, your cousins, your parents, your grandparents, your kids. Sometimes they, they really do not expect you to be strong. They expect you to take it, especially if it's your parents. If your parent is a narcissist and they have been treating you terribly for your entire life, they expect you to take it because, because guess what? I'm your mom. I brought you into this world. I'm your dad. I sacrificed so much to give you. I, I sacrificed my life to give you what you got. You, 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 des you, you owe this to me. I deserve respect. I deserve to be part of your life. I deserve, I deserve, I deserve. They feel entitlement. There's a sense of entitlement that comes with narcissistic parents uh, and things like that because they don't think you will cut them off because they are your parents. They are your grandparents. They are your aunts. They're your uncles and things of that nature. They feel like they don't have to. Look, I brought you into this world. I can take you out. But they can't really take you out. Yeah, they can, but I mean, that's a whole different, whole different channel y'all want to talk to on it about stuff like that right there. But literally, narcissistic parents feel like you, they own it. First of all, they birthed you, so they feel like they own you. They feel like they have some, they have some sense of ownership over you for your entire life. Uh, a lot of times, if you're doing good in life, they they want to you to attribute your success to them, to us, like to the to the narcissist. Like you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for me. You wouldn't be here if I wouldn't push you that hard. You wouldn't be here if I would have paid for those extra lessons. You wouldn't be here if I wouldn't have drove you to practice. You wouldn't be here in this position if I would have paid for your college. You wouldn't be here if I wasn't a, a, an alumni from that college, which allowed you to get into there. You wouldn't be here. You owe the narcissist, and the narcissist parents brand you owe us. So we don't expect you to be strong enough to cut us off because guess what? You owe us. We deserve to be in your life, point blank period, in the narcissist brain. We don't expect you to cut us off. Why would you cut us off? It's going to look embarrassing because not only do you have to cut me off, you got to cut everybody else off. Come make sure they know how disrespectful you are. My son cut me off, y'all. He cut me off for nothing. After all I gave him, he'll cut me off. My son toxic. Now you the toxic one. So they had, cut off a parent is tough because you got to. They put you against. They'll put you against your brothers and sisters. They'll put you against. Your, they'll put you against the other parent. They'll put you against the grandparents. Your whole family. Sometimes cutting the family, cutting the parent off is tough because you might have to cut the whole family off. You might have to go be, build another family. You know what I mean? I know that's tough because they don't think. But they don't. They don't think you'll do it. The narcissistic parent does not think that you will cut them off. They just don't. You won't cut me off because you. I deserve to be in your life. The narcissistic husband or wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, whatever. You know what I mean? They really do not think that you will cut them off either. Because if you've been in a long-term intimate relationship with somebody and you've put up with so much, why can't you put up with a little bit more? So what? I cheated on you four times. So what? You've forgiven me all four times. You've taken me back all four times. Why not a fifth time? Why? You've been putting up with this terrible treatment for 15 years. 
So why not put it up with 16? Why not 15 more? If you was that bad, you would have left, right? If I'm treating you so terribly, why are you still here? And I know that I was going to say, hey, Lee, it's a trauma bond. I know. <laughs> I say this every episode, though. Hey, Lee, it's a trauma bond. I know. Look, I'm not. This is not Lee you're talking to. This is the narcissist. This is the narcissist. Let me put my horns up so y'all can see my horns right here. So y'all think I'm the Jezebel spirit or the devil. Let me put my horns up, my dread horns up. This is the narcissist speaking to you right now. Lee's gone right now. Lee stepped out. He'll be back later. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, yeah. They don't expect you to be strong. They just think you're going to put up with it. The narcissist in our brain, we think we we know we like. I refuse to believe that no narcissistic person on this planet does not understand what they put you through. They know they are treating you terribly. They know they, they know that they are doing you wrong. That's why they try to hide it. Sometimes they be so bold as to do it up front. Sometimes they they so bold to put it into your face because if they if they in financial if they're financially controlling you or if they isolated you and you're living in a, in a different country or you're living across the country or in a different city away from your family and friends. They'll do it in your face. They'll get super bold with it. Yeah, I'm cheating on you. You leave. Oh, you ain't worked in five years? Cool. You don't have any work history because you've been a stay-at-home parent? Cool. Oh, I'm the breadwinner so you can't do anything? Cool. Got you. It's a setup. They'll, de they'll, get bold and de they'll get bold and challenge you to leave. And when you don't leave, guess what? They think you're okay with it. This is not a polyamorous relationship either. Because only I can do what I want to do. You can't do it. They don't expect strength. They don't expect you to go to therapy. They don't go to this. They, sometimes they'll use therapy against you. If you go to therapy, if my significant other was to go to therapy, I would use that and say, hey, you crazy. See, what only one of us is in, is in therapy because you are, something is wrong with you. I'm good. I'm not in therapy. You're in therapy. They'll use therapy as a reason to put you down. They'll make you feel subconsciously guilty or bad about going to therapy. You going, to, you going in there feeding your soul, feed, eating that therapy soup. <laughs> Eating that therapy chicken noodle soup, sucking, lapping it up. They make you feel bad about it. Don't feel bad about it. Take your strength back. I know you have to. Sometimes you just can't leave. I notice here. Everybody's situation is different. Every single, every single person's situation is different. Everybody that's listening to this, your situation is different than uh, than everybody else's. Your situation is unique to you. You make your own plan. You make your unique escape plan. You do whatever you want to do, whatever you need to do to protect your peace. Because in the end, it's your peace. You have to protect it. Because I'm going to get out of this video. I'm going to go do what I'm going to do. You have to learn how to protect your own peace. What gives you the most peace on this planet? So I know somehow when it gets, you know, I know I know it gets tough. I know people are like, Lee, it's tough, it's tough, it's tough. I know it's tough, y'all. Nothing easy, like nothing great is easy. Nothing great is easy. It's just not. The narcissist in your life, parent, friend, whatever, does not expect you to cut them off. They don't expect. They don't think you're strong enough to do it. Are you gonna prove them right, or are you gonna prove yourself right? Who are you worried about proving right mo the most? Prove yourself right. You matter more than you. You matter more than you. And sometimes when you do build up the strength to leave or take your power back, and then they start, they promise you to change. They start begging, pleading, and crying to change. Don't eat that up. Don't suck that up. I know you. They're gonna tell you. They told me, hey, Lee, it was so hard because they they told me everything that I wanted to hear. Of course they did. Of course they told you what you wanted to hear. If they want to keep you in their life, why would they tell you what you don't want to hear? Why would they tell you the truth or how they're going to treat you and how they're going to do you? Why would they do that? It don't make sense. Why would they tell you exactly what they're going to do? If it means you're going to leave, they're going to lie to you to get you stay, stay, to stay longer, to have a, hey, let's have another, you know, if, you know what a fix this relationship? Let's have another baby. Let's quit, let's, you quit your job and stay home with the kids. Let's make plans to, to, so I can be more in control of you. They are setting you up and don't let them set you up. Take your power back, whatever that means to you. Protect your peace. I know everybody can't leave. Everybody doesn't want to leave. I'm not telling you to leave. I'm not telling you run out the door right now. I'm telling you to do whatever it takes to protect your peace. If that means standing up for yourself in front of your nurses, use discretion because some people are, do get physically violent and are, and are dangerous. If that means standing up for yourself and say, no, I'm not doing that. You do it. I'm not staying here. Like, I'm going on vacation. I'm going out with my friends. I'm going to do this. If that means doing that, because you know, you, you know, you go go out and have fun. Go out and have fun because you know you come home, you gotta hear the whiny crying ass narcissist. They home crying because you went out with your friends, even though they get to go, they get to go out with their friends all the time. You gotta listen to these crying ass dudes and and whiny ass women out here 
whining and crying because you're doing exactly what they're doing. When you give, I, I, I always say this: when you give a narcissist a taste, when you give a narcissist a taste of their own medicine, they typically spit it up. They typically spit it up because it's not delicious. It's not good. When you give a narcissist a taste of their own medicine, they, it's my own medicine. I don't like it because it's not good to them. It doesn't taste good. It's not healthy for them. Take your power back. Stop worried about hurting their feelings. I don't, I don't, if I go out with my friends, gonna hurt their feelings. To hell with their feelings. Do what you need to do to protect your own peace, to protect your own self, your own sanity. Especially if you have kids. Y'all been sitting out here crying in front of your kids, treating your kids worse because you're getting treated terrible by somebody else? They don't expect you to be strong. Weak people don't raise strong kids. You can't. You can't pour into your kids if your cup is empty. Protect your own peace. Why? Stop. For love, for the chance at love, somebody that treat you terrible. Take your power back. Protect your peace, please. Because that gets my nerves. I, I just, ah. You're stronger than what you think you are. You're stronger than what you think you are. You strong. You, you don't look like what you've been through. Sometimes you do. You've been through a lot. Protect your peace. They don't expect you to be strong. But this 2021, we're taking back the strength. See that flex? Oh, I'm going to crap my muscle. I went to the gym today. First time in a long time. Protect your peace. Take your power back. Mental illness is out. Peace.